Hello and welcome. I am Nicolette Vete, Certified Feng Shui Practitioner with Inspired Living Feng Shui, and I have another amazing class for you. Today we are going to be talking about everything about prosperity and wealth and abundance and money. I'm going to be talking to my friend Mia Stasco. She's a feng shui practitioner, but she's also interior designer. And she matches and marries these two practices together and has a dynamic uh, impact and influence on your space. We're going to talk about wealth today, so which glad. is everybody's favorite thing to ask about when it comes to feng shui. When we talk about wealth and feng shui, we're not just talking about money. I think that once you get past a certain level of income, for example, you know, once you're at a certain comfort level, and that comfort level, I think, is difficult for us in North America because we have this very high standard. But that comfort level is really pretty low. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, like if you're housed and you're fed and you're healthy and you're all of those things, you know, it doesn't take a lot to be that. So to me, everything over and above that is actually where we get into the abundance. We need to really spend some time contemplating what that means for us. Right? Like, how do I define that? Mm -hmm. um, does it just mean more money? Like, why more money? What will more money do for me? The universe doesn't hear what you want. You know, if, it's not, if you're not clear about what you want, it's more difficult for it to respond. This is fascinating because I don't know that I am clear with the universe. And it's not that easy. I, I remember, you know, putting my toilet seats down because that was supposed to be great for abundance. Um, and, and I remember sort of thinking, oh yeah, because every time I do that now, I sort of internally kind of go, thank you for my wealth. You know, thank you for me keeping my money and not having in it my drain house. down the toilet. That's right. And so we're, we're going to divide that into nine, into nine quadrants. And Equal. each of those, mm -hmm. yeah, each of those equal spaces has its own sort of inherent meaning and energy and symbols and colors that uh, are associated with it. Um, our wealth gua is found in the, when we're standing at the front door looking into the house, it is found on the far left corner, the back, the far back left corner. Right. The correct element for that gua is wood and and that's represented by the color green that's represented by s tall cylindrical sort of shapes like trees tree tall yeah trees. think sort of tree trunk mm -hmm. you know so if if we don't have enough wood we can use the constructive cycle of energy to support the wood energy right so we wood. can add water you know we can add well you say that i know that but I they know. might not know that <laughs> so we can add we can add water <laughs> um, yeah so we can add the water element because in, water think of watering a tree water feeds the wood energy. So this right. is the constructive cycle of energy. Right. So red, red and purple are two, red, green and purple are two, are three great colors for the abundant squaw. But not in excess. Not, we want to be careful about the, about red in particular because it is, does represent fire. So it's very active, vibrant energy. We're trying to get things moving in the wealth squaw, but we do, we want to be just a tiny bit careful because it is also associated with fire. We're going to go way outside of the wealth sector and show you lots of different ways of boosting your and enhancing your wealth energy, your prosperity, your abundance, that feeling by looking at different areas of the house as well. Mm -hmm. okay. The front door is, is essential because that's where the energy, that's where the chi is coming into our homes. The kitchen is very important, but the stove in particular. I think that once we can provide food, not even shelter and clothing, I think that once we can provide food for our families, everything above that, is abundance. They are draining rooms. They have they have a, a waste function. They have a draining function. The, the water actually drains out of the home. And all of the <coughs> energy is moving down and away from the house. Right. And away so, from you. Right. And so they're they're considered to be poor feng shui. That's okay, it. let's talk about a headboard <laughs> just for a moment, how important a headboard is. Yeah, a headboard is so important because it supports us. It, it helps to sort of protect our crown chakra, you know, the energy that's open at the top of our head. Um, it provides, from a feng shui standpoint, it provides this essential backing. And so an office by the front door is really very beneficial. Yeah, an office by the front door is great. You know, we, we're doing business in an office, which is an outside world activity. You know, we're going out into the world to connect with customers and to connect with other people.